Thanks for coming for such short notice. Uh, this morning, an internal staff preparatory meeting was convened by the City Administrator Bruce Grubb and Emergency Services Coordinator uh, Leo Schaffman to discuss the City's preparations and potential responses to a variety of flood levels. In addition to all Fargo City Departments, the City of West Fargo, Cass County, Fargo Public Schools, North Dakota Air National Guard, First Link, and American Red Cross were participants in this meeting. The important talking points from the meeting, Bruce Grubb, Incident Commander, with Mike Redlinger, talked about the problem of getting volunteers out for this flood fight, and we're concerned about the ability to generate a million sandbags and get them put in the neighborhoods. All the staff in charge of operations, logistics, planning, and finance all had good plans prepared. Our engineers are working to identify what measures are needed and where individual engineers will be in charge of the respective division of the city. Our priorities are safety as well as protection of property and infrastructure. We're emphasizing preservation of residents' homes, especially basements. Sandbag production will be worth starting up next Tuesday, March 25th. Our logistics plan is to have one million sandbags as needed for storing and placing out in the neighborhoods. First link will oversee volunteer coordination. Engineers are working on traffic patterns, parking issues that may arise, and we'll be using online services as well to help keep things simple. Sandbag deployment will be just with equipment needs, logistics of volunteers, how to transport and tr deploy the sandbags. Water, electric, gas are important points of emphasis and may warrant extra protection. Day-to-day -day life preserved as much as possible. Minimize any interruptions to business. Police will provide security around our protective measures and traffic control. Fire is prepared for rescue operations and helping in sandbag deployment as well. Uh, quick response teams will be ready as well. The planning department also, as we always do with the flood fight, prepare for sheltering and mass feeding as needed. American Red Cross, Fargo Fire, uh, Cass County, excuse me, Cass Fargo Emergency Management and others will help us with food. And the city may have to remain very cognitive of vulnerable populations and coordinate critical care and health facilities. The advantage we have in talking with the staff this morning, about 90% of them had been through the 209 flood, so we bring that experience to the table. We are basically going to go ahead and revise our plans as far as going to flood fights from here forward. Nathan would tell you that we've done a lot of in-town work throughout the city, so we don't need 6.5 million sandbags. Uh, we only need a million, but there's still some measures that we're going to have to take within the city. We will be having a meeting like we've had tabletop meetings before in the past in the flood fight next Monday, and at that uh, meeting we'll outline the different areas that need protection and what needs to be done throughout the city. In preparation for this, we have a possible crest of over 40 feet, we have a timeline that may crest around the 15th of April. At present status, that's where it's looking, but we do not have the deterministic is when it starts to flow. The Weather Service is going to give us a reports now twice a week, Monday and Thursday, to update us on the flood fight and what the levels might be. That will be more helpful to us on a deterministic basis, and that will give us a better idea where the flood fight's going to go. Now, in order to prepare for this, uh, my engineers and team have to order a variety of things which cost money, and in a flood fight, we'd like to have the ability to get back some of that money from FEMA, so we have to declare an emergency. So that's what we're going to sign today. I'm signing an emergency declaration in anticipation of the 2019 spring flood. The city of Fargo is in danger of suffering a substantial flood event and therefore proclaim that the state of emergency exists in the city. This emergency declaration authorizes agencies of local, state, and federal agencies to take action to limit hardships on this pending emergency upon the citizens of Fargo. I'm directing city staff to prepare for a National Weather Service current 10% probabilistic forecast of 40.3 feet river crest. This will require the production of 1 million sandbags over the next few weeks, in addition to other measures. Fargo Sandbag Central will open Tuesday, March 26 at 8 a.m. and will continue operations until the sandbag goal has been met, somewhere between 9 and 10 days. Volunteers will be requested to assist in this production effort as well as placement of the sandbags. More information on volunteer sign-up efforts will be made available this week. As in previous flood fighting efforts, Fargo staff members will begin regular public be briefings on Monday, March 25th in the Fargo City Chambers. 
Public meetings will take place. We want to keep you in the loop. The city will be diligent in its timely dissemination of information. Be careful when considering what you read on social media. If it is not from the city of Fargo, check to make sure it is accurate. While we've made tremendous strides in our permanent flood protection effort, this is a very serious flood forecast and we will meet it with a serious response. It is critically important for everybody to know that we will need the public's assistance. We cannot be complacent. Once again, we need to see the spirit of Fargo across our volunteer efforts. Working together, we are all committed to successfully protecting Fargo Metro. With that, I'll sign the emergency declaration. And we'll open it uh, for questions. I have all my different experts behind me that if you have any questions on any matter of this flood fight can ask, so I'd open it up. It'll be an eight, uh, 12 hour shift, is it, Bruce? 12. 12 hour shift daily, we'll break for the weekend and then do it Monday through Friday at 12 hour shifts. We anticipate that if we have both spiders running, we can make about 100,000 sandbags a day. And we'll, we'll update that. Terry Ludlam will give us an update every night to, to say where our load is, where we have to be. Good. Don? Nathan, you want to take that one? Question is, how many miles of uh, levees and dikes do we have to build or sandbag? So we are still developing our plan. Uh, we don't have the actual mileage determined yet, but we anticipate uh, if we had a flood similar to 2009, we're about 20 miles worth of emergency levees. So we'll have those numbers here in the next week or so. Is that yours or is that Nathan's? I don't know who did the sandbag estimate. Well, actually, Nathan did the sandbag <laughs> estimate, but I'm more than happy to come up. Um, we actually have a spreadsheet that we've used, um, and we've been making adjustments as houses have been demolished and permanent levees have come um, been installed. So um, we're we're very confident at the numbers that we're pulling, dependent on. Um, the elevation that we're looking at and that we're preparing for. So one of the tricks is you have to have the sandbags ready to deploy. You may not deploy them, depending on how far the river goes up. But if you all of a sudden, in, in, in uh, 209, we had 10 days. We have a lot more time on this flood fight to get ready, but it's much easier to have the sandbags ready and we have a place to store the sandbags and then deploy them as you need. We don't want unnecessary work if you don't need to do it. If you've got a fast melt, maybe you need them quicker. So we just want to be prepared either way. possibly in uh, jeopardy of flooding? Has there been any calculations? So-called danger zone, maybe? Well, we know our current 100-year floodplain is based off of a river stage of 39.3, and we have right around 2,500 properties affected with that uh, floodplain. So at a little over a stage of 39 feet, we would have would if we did not do any emergency efforts, we would expect right around that 2,000, 2,500 properties affected. How many houses have been removed since 2009? Uh, yep, we're right around 240 homes that have been acquired and removed since 2009 within the city of Fargo. And then I think uh, in the county, it's 140. So there's almost 400 homes. Good news is where the university, the, it's a question about the university and how it's protected. 
basically the way the city of Fargo works is that you have to protect the whole city of Fargo and anybody within that area has to be protected. We would have evacuation areas ready for people if they did. University happens to be on a little bit more high ground, so we're, we have the capacity to protect them. It'll kind of depend, Nathan, what we do north side of Fargo, and there are some areas that there are some vulnerabilities, and we would hope the students help us protect those areas. Okay, there's somebody else. Concerned, but what uh, what has been done down to the south and to the west here that uh, would perhaps uh, give us a little more of a break? Uh, you're absolutely correct that uh, overland flooding is a concern for us during the flood fight. Um, we will have to make sure we have the appropriate heights on our southern line of protection. Uh, there are areas where we have existing levees in place, but there are areas where we do not, so that's one of those areas where we will have to construct some emergency measures, but then we also work very closely with the county and their uh, emergency efforts and make sure that uh, we're complementing each other. The county has 400,000 sandbags they'll need for many of the areas. A lot of the areas are north of the city, north of uh, West Fargo area that they will have to protect. And then they have individual farm sites that they'll have to protect as well. So there's some buyouts they haven't completed yet, so they'll have to do that. And then uh, Jason would have the information on that, the county engineer. It's minimal, but some FM diversion work has been done. Any idea how that could impact the flow of the Red River, the little work that has been done? Uh, the work that has been done in town will uh, benefit us here, uh, reduces our emergency measures. Uh, the FM or Diversion Authority has completed some of the in-town projects. Out of town, um, it's been the Oxbow levy construction so that uh, we've been able to restore the protection they had before. Um, the other, only other piece of construction that's been going on is the inlet down by Horace and that will not impact the flooding conditions at all. So when we're running Sandbag Central full blast, we need 200 volunteers an hour, basically. It takes about 80 to 100 to run each spider. Spider has eight limbs, is it, Bruce, or six? Six. Six, uh, six limbs of sandbags that come down. So in order to have some uh, time off or, or you know ability for people to go in and go out, we need about 200 total. Um, we will have also sand and bags if people want to do that. We are going to design a volunteer list so you can see when it's busy or who's there. And if businesses want to volunteer, bring a team of volunteers in, that would help as well. But we will but set up an online area in which you could see that. The schools we met with this morning, and they're also going to put some volunteers from the junior high area to help us make these sandbags. They probably will be running during school time, so somewhere between 9 and 3. The real areas where we'll need help is anywhere after 3. We'd, we really need the adult volunteers at that time. Scenario: uh, Where should people be looking to go for sheltering if, for some reason, the water does go over the dikes or something does break through? So, in the City of Fargo, our uh, saying is evacuation is not an option. Just so you understand that. But what we will do is we will have sites where people can go out for shelter. Typically, that's Castleton, or typically it's areas in West Fargo. We will publish a list actually where those sites will be. Uh, we, uh, at, at, in 209, we did have the vulnerable population moved out of the city, which is about 2,000 people. We normally do not evacuate. Do you think you have trouble getting volunteers after? Like, because it's, you know the way things work, is unless things are moving, I don't think people are going to be all that excited to help, or do you think they will be? Well, the, well, memory is good for us, but a lot of people, 20% of the people in our community, you know, have not done a flood fight. And the secondary issue is that you think, well, we've already got it tucked in there. The reality is sometimes it is hard to get people to go out and volunteer for sandbaking, Mike. So I'm, I'm hopeful that the city has always, you know, exceeded my expectations, but it's early spring and are we going to get motivated to get up to get out there? And sag begging is tiring, you know, you know how that is. You don't always like to do that as the best event you do, but I think it's a great opportunity for a workout and get out there and be with the public and have a great time. So maybe we can get some competition in it. Still around from 09, is that what is that what uh, you said? I asked the room to raise their hands and I would say ninety percent of them said yes. 
all in different positions. So there were different people in here as far as engineering staff goes, and you know, Bruce Grubb was Pat Zavarro, and so there's different people have changed. Bruce got a second guy to help him out, Mike Redlinger will help him out with the incident command. So we have more personnel, I think, that can manage this flood, but it's some new people. Yep. No longer here, and yep. uh, Mark Bittner, right? And yep. At the county level, I think Keith, Keith Burnt is gone as well. Yep. So that's a lot of years of experience. Is that's any concern at all there? Or no. Well, I have some concerns because it's awful hard to predict the level of the flood, and Denny was master at that, figuring out just where that river would come in. But uh, the team that's replaced them institutionally has great knowledge, and I'm very confident in it. <laughs> it's uh, hidden in the office. That's this weekend. I have I have some uh, surveillance because uh, Chief Dirksen goes down south and he's given me a little idea what's going on. Apparently, the it's not uh, quite melted up to Watertown and then it starts to get snow again. He's not seeing a lot of black dirt out there right now, which we like to see. Uh, there's fear that water could go over two of the three bridges up there. Are all the bridges safe here, or could some of these be in jeopardy depending on the height of the water? Yeah, at these levels, uh, at 28 feet, 12th Avenue goes under. Um, First Avenue Bridge will be closing as well due to uh, the removable flood walls on both Moorhead and Fargo side. Uh, the 52nd Avenue Bridge will go under, um, so there will be a lot of transportation impacts between the two states with this flood. And again, on next Monday, we'll address those issues so people will know when it gets to this level what's going to happen. We also will be putting out alerts whenever we are getting an uh, area to flood, but North Fargo will be inconvenienced quite a bit, and the crossover between Moorhead and Fargo will be inconvenienced because you're only down to two bridges, and then South Fargo will have trouble on 52nd. How concerned is the city with uh, sewage issues and water issues coming up with this flood? Ben's really happy to come up and answer that one. <laughs> so that's something that's always <laughs> concerning to us because uh, once the river reaches the 27 foot range, we're all on uh, pumping from our lift stations. So a rain event, a heavy um, thaw would really cause a lot of pooling of water in our streets. Um, it's something that would just take for the system to catch up. As far as our sewage system, they've made some great improvements up at our wastewater treatment plant. Allows us to buy, pass some water up to our lagoons, buy us some time. So that's something we will have to take day by day and, and in connection with any rain event that comes in. And Ben, comment a little bit about changes, uh, new pumps, and new stuff we have since 2009. So we've had a lot of changes since 2009. Uh, Nate's team, Brenda's team, has done some great work for the city of Fargo. Not only have we removed a lot of homes, but we've uh, uh, replaced a lot of our lift station. A lot of our older infrastructure has been replaced. So a lot of lift stations that didn't have generator capacity before are now on generators. So if there is a power outage, it, it'll still function as it should. The other thing is we've, we've combined a lot of the sewers that we used to have to plug on our storm sewer side and have a temporary pumping. So we've combined a lot of that and put it into a lift station. So the the, the uh, demand for alternative pumping or auxiliary pumping is not there like it was in 09. And then one other thing to some of the reporters may not understand this. Where are you pumping that water with those pumps? Are you pumping them somewhere special or is it going back in the river? So that's uh, our stormwater system. It has to go right back into the river. We're, this is what we're set up to do. We'll pump into our wet wells and our lift stations. So what happens is when we flood and we get a storm event or a rain event, we're still going to be pumping our pumps to pump the water back into the river. Even as the river floods, we pump water back into the river. So if we didn't have that reverse pumping, we wouldn't be able to. There was always a concern that your storm sewers would fill up, come out of the storm sewers, then backfill and go into the houses. So that's the capacity we have. And we have 72 pumps right now. 75. 75. Put in three more and I didn't even know about it. Question for Ben. I know you guys have been overwhelmed with all the snow, nowhere to put it, <laughs> and a lot of the you know catch basins are frozen solid shut. I mean, what's going to be your plan of attack to get them open? I mean, along with snow removal, the next are you going to have to change your plan of attack in the next so, few weeks? That's a great question. Uh, our team is still struggling with that as of today. We've been running 24/7 um, since Friday. 
well, since January 1st, basically. But since Friday, we've been doing uh, storm catch basin opening on the corners, cutting corners, hauling some of the streets that are way out. Um, and so we are progressively still moving out throughout the city. Um, we will continue to do that till they're all open. What about those ruts? You know, I drive in here in the morning and I got this big rut in my road. Can you take that out for so me? This please? was flood. This was uh, so. <laughs> we will move in to start trying to plow some of the streets and get rid of some of those ruts. Right now, it's just been so cold at night that we haven't been able to cut it with our maintainers. So this afternoon, we're out there um, working on that, and hopefully, it doesn't cool down to 14 degrees as it did last night. I know some people have been concerned about the ruts, but Ben's team has to wait till it's well, warm enough with slush. You can move slush, you can't move ice. So. Any other questions? Team is here, if you have any personal interviews you want to do. Bruce Grubb, are you available for the next 15 minutes? Or? I'm available. Do you want to say a few words? Is your team ready? Well, my concern is kind of like what Mr. McFeely mentioned when I, over the weekend, thought about this, that uh, no Denny, no Pat, no Mark, no April. Um, I'm new in a position of leadership here, although I spent an awful lot of years out at Sandbag Central. So I still consider this kind of a two-phase flood fight. Number one, you, uh, you do the prep for sandbags, and then you deploy in place. Uh, Earthen levees, uh, that's contract work. It isn't as volunteer dependent. Uh, the thing about sandbags, it's nearly 100% volunteer dependent. So we're working with the schools, uh, NDSU, the chamber, hoping that those evening hours uh, can be filled uh, maybe by members of the public, uh, chamber businesses that would like to help out. And so uh, we'll see what the volunteer spirit is like. It's been a while. But um, I'm anxious to see folks. Uh, I think in my neighborhood, other areas in Fargo, people are a little concerned. A lot of snow. Uh, probabilistic forecasts come out, the 5%, the highest that we've ever seen it in my 30 years here. So uh, we're going to control what we can control uh, and get prepared. And uh, um, I'm confident. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. It was interesting, Mike, this morning when we talked to the schools, they asked if we had a video on how to make a sandbag. So it was kind of like, and then a video on how to make a sandbag wall. So we said, okay, it's been too long since we've had a flood, because that used to almost be second knowledge to every citizen in Fargo, or West Fargo, or Moorhead. So uh, we might be making a video on how to do sandbags and make them, but uh, to everybody in this room, I think we kind of know how to do that, but we'll, we'll see how that goes. Well, thank you very much. Uh, we'll see how this goes, but our next meeting, which we have a public discussion of this, will be next Monday. We will have another forecast on Thursday, so you may have some comments from our office at that time. And again, as we get closer and the flood uh, water starts running, that's when we can be more definitive on how high it's going to go and where, what we're going to prepare for. Presently, we're preparing for 41 feet, so we'll continue to do that. Thank you.